Well, good morning and welcome to East Church. I am Pastor JT and I hope your soul finds a warm welcome with us here on this day of celebration as we celebrate Easter together. We've got a lot for our service today, but we're going to start by saying Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And whenever you hear that throughout the service, I invite you to say along with me, Christ is risen indeed. It's a part of our celebration that we can have together today. We also have a a few notes coming up. Our Easter celebration continues with the end of our concert series coming up at 7 o'clock on Wednesday on YouTube. We also have a time to uh, celebrate next week with the wider church. I'm going to be on vacation this week. And so next week, we're going to have a worship service provided by the wider church uh, so we can see what's going on in different parts around the country. So I hope you'll join us for that worship service just as you join us for our concert series finale on Wednesday just as you, you have joined us today. And so let us begin our celebration of Easter together. Good morning and welcome to East Church. Please join with me in the call to worship. This day is like every other day. Alarm clocks beeped, covers were removed, coffee was brewed and weary bodies came to life. And yet this day is like no other day for the sun rose and we knew it was a miracle. The tomb was empty, and they knew it was love. So again and again we say, the longest night is over. Death has lost its sting. Jesus is among us. Alleluia. Amen. Again and again and again. Alleluia. Amen. Please join with me in the prayer of confession and assurance. Friends, had we been there that first Easter morning, it is likely that many of us would have been with the disciples, hiding out in fear, locked behind doors, alone with our thoughts in the upper room. I wish I could say that I would have gone with the women, that I would have been brave and determined. I wish I could say that I would have held on to my faith. But the truth is, we'll never know. What I do know is that Jesus came back for all of us, not the few who had maintained faith or the few who stayed with him until the end. He came back for the broken and the afraid, for the cowardly and for the greedy, for the women in the garden and for the disciples hiding in the upper room. He came back for those who betrayed him and those who worshiped him. He came back for you and for me. So join with me in the prayer of confession as indicated on the screen, knowing that no matter where we are on the spectrum of faith, Jesus lived, loved, and returned for us. Let us pray. Beloved community, before God and before you, my family, I confess. I have seen the sun rise and withheld my praise. I have seen my neighbor suffer and withheld my aid. I have seen love extended and chosen to walk away. I have seen divisions deepen and managed to remain unfazed. We hear you. We see you. You are forgiven. God's love is like the sun, 
No matter how lost we are in the night, day after day the light will find you. Rest easy. You are held in God's warmth. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now we must pray. Beloved friend, before God and before each other we confess. We have seen the sun rise and withheld our praise. We have seen our neighbors suffer and have withheld our aid. We have seen love extended and chosen to walk away. We have seen divisions deepen and managed to remain unfazed. I hear you, I see you. You are forgiven. God's love is like the sun. No matter how lost we are in the night, day after day, the light will find you. Rest easy. You are held in God's warmth. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Please join with me in the affirmation of faith. We know the fear of the upper room. We know the feeling of hard days and long nights. We know the grief of the tomb and the particular ache of saying goodbye. We know the pain of Good Friday and we know the darkness before the dawn. And still, and still, we believe. We believe that again and again the sun will rise. Again and again God will draw near. Again and again we will march toward justice. Again and again the tomb will be empty. Again and again love will win. Again and again God will lead the church. Again and again and again and again, we will be loved. The journey will not be perfect. We will need to rise before dawn. We will need angels along the way. But again and again, the sun will rise. We believe. Amen.
and happy Easter. Our book for this week is Rain Before Rainbows, written by Smitri Prasadam Halls and illustrated by David Litchfield. If you are interested in this book, please go find the video on East Church's YouTube page. And have a great week.
please join me for a moment of prayer. Loving God, open our eyes to see what is beautiful, our minds to know what is true, and our hearts to love what is good. For Jesus' sake. Amen. A colleague of mine recently pointed out that in the biblical story, there is no joy on Easter morning. It was a weird thing for me to hear because I cannot think of anything but pure joy on Easter morning. More than any other day of the year, Easter is to me the day of joy. After experiencing the depth of grief that comes from reliving Jesus' death on Friday, the contrasting joy of Easter morning becomes exponential. And so I want to shout it from the rooftops. Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed. But sometimes, Scripture gets in the way of our narratives. When you look at the four gospel accounts of Easter morning, the most common emotional words used are amazed and terrified with fear being the most universal response. The book of Matthew does mention the joy of the women who encounter an angel at the tomb that told them of the resurrection, but it is also matched with fear. It says, So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. But the other Gospels bypass that joyful feeling to stay with amazement fear, confusion, and doubt among the followers of Jesus. And it's understandable. I mean, even though Jesus told his followers that he would die and then rise again on the third day, it's not like they had a previous experience to draw upon to help guide them in this moment. In their experience, the experience of so, so many that came before him, a loved one died, and you said goodbye, and that was it. That was all one might expect when dealing with the dead. And here in the Gospel of Mark, we have three women coming to the tomb early in the morning when the sun had risen. Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome had followed Jesus in his ministry, even followed him all the way to the cross. They had witnessed his death and his burial. And in witnessing his burial, they saw that there were some of the customary rituals not observed. So they were returning to the tomb to finish to anoint him according to their tradition. And in discussing the problem of opening the tomb, of rolling away this large stone that was too big for them to move on their own, they were indicating that they were not coming to the tomb expecting the risen Jesus. They were there to administer their final goodbyes and to find some closure after a heinous and violent end for Jesus, a deeply traumatic event for everyone involved. And they did not expect anything else. But what they found was a stone already moved and a body already gone. And they found an angel sitting in the place where Jesus was, telling them not to be alarmed. They found this angel in the form of a young man sitting in a white robe, 
sitting on the right side. It says that very particularly in the scripture, sitting on the right side. As Jesus said, he would sit at the right hand of God, telling them all that, that Jesus wasn't just gone, but that he had been raised and is making his way home to Galilee. Now that's a lot for Mary and Mary and Salome to take in in this moment. That's a lot for anyone to take in when encountering a moment like this. They were expecting a closed tomb and a problem to solve and rolling away the stone and a body to anoint and release. And what they got was something else. The resurrection. And it was terrifying. They fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And according to the gospel, they said nothing to anyone, explicitly ignoring what the angel had told them about sharing this information with Peter and the other disciples because they were afraid. And that's where the story ends in the Gospel of Mark. Oh, there are a few more lines of Scripture because scholars have determined that people didn't like that, that ending on fear. And so they added another ending sometime after the original ending was written. And then people didn't like that ending either. So they wrote another ending. Yes, there are three endings to the book of Mark. One that ends on silence and fear. One that ends with a reversal in which the three women actually do tell Peter and the disciples all that they have been commanded. And then one longer ending in which Jesus appears to Mary and then to the other disciples commissioning them to ministry before ascending to heaven. Now, these two later endings added perhaps a hundred years or even more after the original manuscript was written put a brighter spin on the end of this gospel story. After all, that original ending concluded with fear. The literal last word that we have is afraid. As the women were afraid to speak about what they had seen on this unexpected morning at the tomb. But that doesn't really share the story of Jesus well, nor does it inspire us to share the story because the ending brings silence instead of joy. And so for the early Christians, in order for their faith to grow, the story had to continue to find some hope to share, to help in growing that church and making a difference in people's lives. These new endings, they alter the finality of the gospel, transforming it into an open-ended opportunity to share ministry with the world. But I like the simplicity of this original ending, and as I reflect on it, I like that it ends with fear. Because here we are, 2,000 years later, sharing in worship on this Easter morning because three women left the tomb in fear, saying nothing to anyone. And then, after the end of the story, came new life. When they overcame that fear and did spread the news. Of the resurrection. On the morning of the first Easter, joy was not in order and fear was present, but the story of the gospel goes beyond the words that are on the page because those women overcame their fear to share with the world the resurrection that they had encountered in their lives. 
And that's an inspirational story that carries weight for me because each time we encounter death in our lives, it is not a story of joy, but a story of grief. And that's true when we encounter the death of loved ones in our lives, but it's also true of many of the endings we encounter. And when any end comes along, we can be like the women, watching the death and the burial and waiting in grief. They didn't go to the tomb right away. They waited a few days. They waited in their pain and in their grief, perhaps even reliving the trauma of Friday afternoon over and over and over again in their minds. They waited through the Sabbath day. And then they came in the morning to see the body of Jesus. And instead they discovered that the world had changed. The entire world had changed. And they left in fear. What we learn from the women at the tomb is that there is a time for grief and a time for fear, and those times are real. But beyond those times is a time for something else. And on this Easter morning, it's a story of coming to terms with the new life in front of us before finally sharing that story for everyone to hear. In fact, there are stories of resurrection all around us. And when we encounter them, it's okay for us to be silent for a while, to sit in whatever fear that we have, to process all of our emotions around what we are experiencing before the time comes to speak out. And this past year is a great example of that. Deep in this unrelenting pandemic, we have been waiting for a year. It's like we've had our own time in the tomb. And we thought when it started, it might even be just a few days or or maybe a few months. But now it's been a year. And even as we've been waiting, we've seen so much change and so much ending and so much death around us in this past year, sometimes it's hard to see anything else but the endings. Yet in, the year, in this year that has been so much, too much, there has also been new life. Somewhere in between all of the masks and the social distancing of, and all the illness and the death and all of our political polarity and all of the violence that has been present around us, seeds have become, begun to bloom. With every ending we've experienced in the last year, another opportunity is ready to take its place if we are willing to give it the space to grow. And that is the resurrection that we experience today. So what are your stories of resurrection this year? Where have you found new life in this year? We have to keep asking ourselves that question, because the more we are able to tune into the resurrection in every moment, the more we are willing to see it anywhere around us. Suddenly, we start to see it everywhere. Easter Sunday, resurrection abounds. New 
ministry opportunities in the church, resurrection abounds. New technology that allows us to stay safe at home and still participate in worship, resurrection abounds. Deeper conversations around racial reconciliation and restoration, well, resurrection abounds. The first month of spring, resurrection abounds. New baseball season this weekend, resurrection abounds. New season of your favorite TV show, resurrection abounds. Another paycheck, resurrection abounds. Another birthday, resurrection abounds. Tomorrow's sunrise, resurrection abounds. The reality is that Every new beginning that we encounter comes from some other beginning's end. And that doesn't always bring us joy right away. But it does bring new life. Which allows us the time and the space to grow beyond our fears and see where resurrection can take us. And when we're ready. And we start sharing our stories of new life. Well, that's the morning when joy comes. A morning that we can share together. A morning like this Easter morning. And I, I am ready for the joy of today. So let us shout our hallelujahs from the top of our lungs. Hallelujah! As we proclaim that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Today, and tomorrow, and for the rest of time. And with that, we can see again and again and again and again, resurrection abounds. Amen.
come now to our time of prayer. And as we begin our time of prayer, we begin with silence so that you can lift your own prayers up to God. So let us join together in a time of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we come to you today on this day of resurrection, seeking new life. We lift these prayers to you, seeking new life in so many different avenues of our lives. We come seeking new life because we know We need change in this world. We need hope. We need healing. We need peace. We need comfort. We need food. We need shelter. We need connection and relationship. We need compassion. We need love. We know these are all available to us when we recognize your presence in this world. Your presence that brings new life. So God, bring us to new life on this day and on every day. As we pray, In the name of the resurrected one, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy world be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to our time of communion. So if you haven't already, we invite you to gather your communion elements together. It can be whatever you have available to you, bread and juice, crackers and milk, donuts and coffee. It's all the same in Christ's eyes, so let us pull those elements together and celebrate at this table. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger. You who believe in me shall never thirst. In company with all who hunger for spiritual food, we come to this table to know the risen Christ and the sharing of this life-giving bread. Let us pray. Holy God, our loving creator, close to us as breathing and distant as the farthest star, we thank you for your constant love for all you have made. We thank you for all that sustains life, for all people of faith in every generation who have given themselves to your will. 
and especially for Jesus Christ, whom you have sent from your own being as our Savior. We praise you for Christ's birth, life, death, and resurrection, and for the calling forth of your church for its mission in the world. Gifted by the presence of your Holy Spirit, we offer ourselves to you as we unite our voices with the entire family of your faithful people everywhere, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God Most High. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, as sisters and brothers in faith, we recall anew these words and acts of Jesus Christ. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Jesus took a cup, and after giving thanks, gave it to the disciples and said, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for the many for the forgiveness of sins. We remember Christ's promise not to drink of the fruit of the vine again until the heavenly banquet at the close of history. And we say boldly what we believe. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Come, Holy Spirit. Bless this bread and bless this fruit of the vine. Bless all of us in our eating and drinking at this table that our eyes may be opened and we may recognize the risen Christ in our midst, in each other, and in all for whom Christ died. Amen. Take and eat, for this is the bread of This is the cup of blessing. Let us pray. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We end our service today in the same way that we started, by proclaiming the good news. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And at the end of our service, hear this Easter blessing. As you leave this space, may your mouth speak of God's goodness. May your arms hold those in need. May your feet walk toward justice. May your heart trust its worth. May your soul dance in God's grace, and may this be your rhythm again and again and again until God's promised day. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself, 
Go with courage. Go with heart. Go in peace. Friends, our worship is over. Let our service begin. Amen.